Okay. Hi again. We're back in the second part of um, um, part eight of our series, What Makes Our Inner Work Work? And this part was called Don't Criticize the Inner Critic, Don't Kill the Inner Killer, Healing the Living Tissue of Consciousness Through Non-Polarizing Inner Work. So uh, see if you have anything you want to comment or ask or whatever. You can do it either in, in the chat, in writing. Uh, if you want to, to talk live, remember this is recorded and it's going to be um, on the internet. Uh, but if it's fine with you, then great. And... Uh, uh, also, it's all going to be in English, so you can write in Hebrew and I'll translate, but if you want to talk, we'll have to, to do it in English. So, is there anybody who wants to say anything? Check how you're feeling. What do you think about what I said? Um, anything that's coming up for you? and see where perhaps you are identified with various uh, inner selves. And because of this identification, you're really judging other parts of yourself. And so really creating these tears and rifts in your own tissue of consciousness, in your own fabric of life. Now, if there aren't any comments or questions, it's perfectly all right. We can end the show here. But I just want to give it a few more minutes. Okay, we have somebody. Um, okay, somebody's writing. It seems it's very difficult to do this work alone. Um, yes and no. I think to start it alone um, isn't that easy. Uh, but of course it's possible. It depends on, on many, many factors but it isn't that easy to, to start alone. So um, it can be very helpful to, to find somebody who can do the work with us, that, is, that knows the work, that understands it very, very well, um, and, uh, um, and, and also uh, here in, in, in Israel, we have a community that works together um, and helps each other. Uh, people help each other, and um, that's very, very helpful. Um, but however helpful it is to start with somebody else, and it's often really, really recommended to do it that way, um, it's still very, very important to find out how to do it ourselves. And this really brings us back to... Um, to what I think I said, as far as I can remember, in the first meeting, which was uh, where I spoke about what I see as real work, work uh, versus fake work. Uh, and real work really, really requires us to find the way to work alone. We can still go to therapy. We can still, at the same time, go to courses or you know, be helped with by other people. And yet, I find that until we begin to do the work ourselves, it can progress extremely far. So this isn't easy for many of us, but that's the challenge to figure out how to, once you know enough of a certain method, 
and you, you can do the work yourself to figure out how to actually do it day by day by day. Now, in the beginning, you perhaps can't do a lot, but you begin and little by little, just like in any type of exercise, you become better at it and it becomes easier to, to help yourself. And this is the only thing that can really free us from our own prisons in a way, because we become uh, our, own, um, our own leaders, our own therapists, our own... And again, it doesn't mean we're not getting help from others in the same time, but we're the center of this. Uh, now, uh, uh, you also say it seems it's very hard to do the work uh, uh, also because um, the, the fear and the duality uh, and the fear of, of, of uh, facing it alone. So yeah, uh, it can be scary in the beginning. So yes, so it's, it's a good idea to get help from somebody who, can, who is not scared by it anymore, who's done his work or her work and, and can really assist there. But one of the things that really, really helps is to realize from the start that this is where we're going. Something like, I am going to accept all my parts, you know, gradually. It can take years and that's absolutely fine. And, you know, each time I become more empowered and more balanced and more uh, unpolarized, and my life, to a certain extent, is better. I feel kind of better, whatever happens. Uh, so uh, I forgot where I was going, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, but what I'm trying to say is that, um, I forgot. <laughs> Hang on, just a second. Um, yes, I remember now that if I say to myself, where I'm going is this, I am going to accept whatever is within me. That's what's going to happen, however long it takes. And yes, when I need help, I'll get help. If I don't have help, I'll figure out how to do it. And I realize from the start that anything that's within me, first of all, is okay. And then I'll find out how to live with it, even if it's something uh, that's difficult to live with. For example, violence or whatever. Um, you know, it can be very difficult for many of us to, to, to accept that we have that inside us and to, to figure out how to, to live with it without it becoming uh, something that... Um, that rules us or causes us either to be violent towards ourselves or to others. So realizing that all these parts are okay, realizing that when I accept a part, it doesn't become worse. It becomes uh, uh, somehow, it begins to work well within the system in general. So perhaps what was violent will now become more like something uh, like a, a kind of strength and, you know, uh, a knowledge that I can defend myself, for example, whatever happens. Um, these are generalizations, but this is more or less what happens. And I, I become more whole and more complete. And so if I remember that my acceptance of things uh, doesn't cause them to take over, but causes them to kind of become parts that work within a whole and that it works much better, then it gives me courage and strength to do the work. And if I understand the principles of how to do it in a safe way, then little by little, I figure it out. I hope this uh, uh, answers your question to a certain degree. Um, another thing we have here. Usually when I realize I've been mentally harmful to myself, it's too late. 
The whole Luna Park of killing, criticizing, etc., is already happening, and it's already messy and hard to go through. You're so right. Uh, that's really what happens to, to everybody until you begin to, to do the work and you do it for enough time and with enough patience. Because uh, this kind of uh, um, battlefield is kind of an ongoing uh, event and, and there are more and more parts that kind of get drawn into it and, and we just, we can really lose ourselves completely within it. But there's no such thing as too late, really. You know, you can stop it at some point and say, okay, now I'm just feeling horrible. I have no idea what to do. And this whole wonderful uh, 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 fabric of my existence is just crumpled into this impossible thing. And I just don't know where to begin. And yet I look at it and I say, for example, what do I feel most now? So for example, let's say uh, I'm feeling uh, extremely sad right now. So perhaps I'll begin there and I'll try to figure out who in me, which part, which self is feeling sad right now. And I'll do the work with that part and with an opposite part, a part that is in some way on the other side of my psyche, you know, in a way. Um, it could be perhaps a, a cheerful side, or it, but it could be other things as well. Okay. And then once I did that, I would probably be faced with another part of it. For example, perhaps there was a, a violent part, or perhaps it was the inner critic who said, you are no good and you're never going to be any good and you just, you'd better just you know, give it up. Very, very common. And then other parts in myself were crushed by it. So now I'll say, okay, I have the courage to face my inner critic and to figure out who he is, why is he so critical of me? What happened to make him so critical? And what might happen if I become uh, non-critical of my critic? And I can just listen and I can just be in in dialogue with it. Um, and what happens is that little by little, and it can take time sometimes, um, I become disidentified with my critic, for example, so that not everything he says immediately is, is uh, accepted as uh, the truth. And I have enough aware I in order to protect for example, uh, some inner children who may be very vulnerable to the inner critic, uh, I can protect them from this direct assault by knowing that the inner critic uh, is legitimate and he can say that I'm worth nothing or that I'm stupid or whatever. And that's his opinion and that's absolutely fine for him and I can listen to it, but I don't have to agree and I can make some boundaries also. I can say, it's fine if you tell me about that, but I don't allow you to, to harm my inner children directly. So you talk to me, okay? We can have a discussion about how stupid you think I am and why you think so and why you keep telling me and, and how you're dressed and, and, and what you like and what you dislike. And I really want to get to know you. You're part of me and I'm sure that you can, we can work together and you can be a very important and, and useful part. I, I want you to, to be there. I want you to, to be a part of me and I'm, I'm sure we can work together. But there are certain limits. So I become a good friend to myself little by little. Now all this requires practice. Just Hearing this and saying, yeah, I understand, is simply not enough. It's better than nothing, definitely. But we really, really have no, no other option than to find a way. It doesn't necessarily have to be my way, but to find a way to do the work, to actually sit and do the work. And that requires all sorts of things to happen in our lives. So I'm not 
saying for one second that it's easy, but uh, from what I can see from myself and from many of my students and people I've facilitated uh, along the years, that's what works. That's the inner work that works. Doing it this way with a lot of patience and perseverance actually works. And you change, you transform and you heal uh, to degrees that uh, are sometimes unimaginable. I dare to say that healing is possible, very, very deep healing. And the more we put into ourselves more uh, energy, more support, more uh, uh, um, time, time to do the work, then little by little we transform. And it's extremely an extremely happy transformation okay now when this happens more and more we begin to um, uh, how would I say it to catch ourselves at an earlier phase of the craziness starting to happen uh, for example very very often when we have an attack of uh, criticism self-criticism for example very often if not almost always we find out that it began sometimes sometimes by something we didn't even notice which you could say was a kind of uh, we were very very um, sensitive for a while perhaps we were um, uh, feeling, uh, um, uh, I forget the word, hurt perhaps, or uh, um, uh, scared. It's very often to do with the inner children, but not necessarily only them. Uh, tense, uh, maybe there something happened maybe somebody shouted at us, maybe we almost had a car accident, or it can be all sorts of things, and can be just something happening in our inner conversation. So there was uh, an increase in vulnerability, that's the word I was uh, looking for. So if there's an increase in my vulnerability, and I'm not in the aware eye, and I have no idea what to do with it. And sometimes I don't even notice it because I'm just busy doing something at the same time, um, cooking, for example, or, or whatever. Then some other selves have to kind of take the, the initiative, I would say, to protect me, you know, from myself according to their point of view. So the critic has a very specific way of looking at things and his talent is to be critical. So his idea of helping is to say, why did you do that? Or how could you be so stupid again? Or, you know, or, or things of that nature, which only cause the vulnerable parts to become even more flustered and in pain and depressed and lost and, you know, and all that. And then they become even more vulnerable and then the critic becomes even more worried. So he becomes even more critical because he's trying to make us better, you know, and make us wiser, <laughs> make us uh, succeed from his point of view, which of course never works. So, if I manage to listen more and more and I uh, become more and more attentive to when the heightened vulnerability happens, then I can stop it at a very early stage. Again, practice, because at that stage I can say, ah, somebody's feeling vulnerable. What's going on? Who is vulnerable? Why? Can somebody inside me tell me what's going on? And then probably a kid would come and say, yeah, I'm vulnerable because we didn't sleep enough and you're not planning your time 
well enough so we can sleep tonight or you know it can be anything or i'm vulnerable because uh because your friend didn't call you as she promised to do or because we don't have uh, any money left in the bank okay so so then from the aware eye instead of going into all this inner fighting and and polarization i take responsibility and i help this child by listening to it acknowledging it honoring it loving it if i can hugging it if i can and this works and then the inner critic sees that somebody is um, is doing what's necessary to calm things in a way or to to balance things and 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 there's somebody with their hands on the wheel so to speak okay so usually you won't go into attack mode. Now, when you do that enough and you're in good communication with the critic, the critic can become a very, very interesting ally instead of an inner enemy. Uh, for example, you can give uh, you know, very wise criticism sometimes. And it can become something like a sort of a coach sometimes and all sorts of very interesting things can happen with a critic when he has his place he is he stops uh kind of being in this attack mode because you're in the aware eye and your vulnerable sides are being well taken care of so this is kind of a, a lifetime work but it's extremely extremely um worth it to spend time because on, on doing it because you really heal and transform the more you do it and these uh inner wars become less and less um terrible to begin with and then they little by little they just can even disappear okay so i hope this is helpful too um Anybody else want to say something before we part for this uh, meeting? All right. So thank you again for being with me, uh, whether you're here in the Zoom room or on Facebook Live or watching this in the future. Um, thank you all very much for joining me again. And uh, I'll be here again uh, next Monday um with some some more things from my experience and my point of view regarding what makes the inner work work bye and love <laughs>